So today, day two, we're going to delve into a little bit more of a project-based approach. Yesterday, we covered the basics of just putting a block into a, into a, or a pattern into a block, and then showing briefly how to do edge-to-edge -edge and four-point quick scale. Now we're going to actually implement that because it's kind of easy to go through the quick demonstration, but now we have the time to delve in a little bit as if you're actually quilting a project. And I wanna show just how easy it still is. So if we go over here, I'm gonna show what we're going to attempt to do today. Again, it's live, so anything can happen, but we're gonna finish it today. Let's look at what I've done previously. And this is a little sampler that I did when we first came out with our crosshatch function on Qbot. And all that's in here, if we break it down, and this is also quilted on silk, and it's just a little demo piece that we hang up at our shows. So what we have here in the center is just a block, or just a, a square on point where we've placed a block. Then in the perimeter, we put in some cross hatching, and this is really fine diamond cross hatching. And then in the area just outside of that, we've done some more cross hatching. And then in the corners, all this, all that is, is line quilting. So basically, here is one design, and then the rest, everything is generated in Qbot. So there's only actually one design in this whole thing. We're going to modify it for time just a little bit today. And instead of this crosshatch, we're going to put in a background fill. And But we have put in the crosshatch, going back to the frame, we have put in the crosshatch off camera just so that you can see how nicely that, well, how nicely that came out. I have to admit, it looks pretty good. So what uh, what I have done is I had first quilted out the, the boundaries and then I filled this so because of time. So now let's get into finishing this off. So we're first going to put that uh, leaf design right in the center. So if I go up to my tablet, I go into four point quick scale. Actually, no, I don't want to do four point quick, quick scale. I want to do pattern quilting. I'm going to use my laser offset again. So here is that precision laser offset. So when I'm selecting points, I'm selecting from that dot. And this laser pointer can be used with any machine. It's an add-on we have. We can use it with any machine that uses Qbot V3. I'm going to select my points and I'm gonna do one point at the corner and one center point along the line. And here we go. And this should give you just a, it, this gives you a glimpse of how we actually quilt something out here. So I've set my points, I say done, and I don't wanna do an inner boundary shape, so I'm gonna, but we're gonna to get to that today. I'm going to say no, and then I go into my modern, no, not modern, it's in my designers folder, and here is that design. Now, if you look on the screen, you can see that obviously does not fit. It goes beyond the boundaries. Again, the boundaries are for our purposes. It does a rough scaling, but it's not good enough. So I know that I need to rotate it 45 degrees, so the points are right. And now I'm just gonna use my two fingers to scale it properly. So there, I pressed one button to rotate it and I'm just using my two fingers and you can see the dots on the screen as I'm sizing it. And then I'm just gonna nudge it over a little bit. So I like that, it looks pretty good. I press done and then move to start. Pull up my bobbin thread, get those out of the way, and then press go. And we're gonna let that quilt out, and it does a nice job. One thing uh, that you can do with smaller designs that sometimes I do, it depends, it really depends on the, I talk a, a lot about densities and stitch densities. When you're quilting 
if you think of when you qu quilt or make doll clothes, the stitch length that you use is not 12 stitches per inch. You get down because it has to scale with the, the design you're doing. Similar things happen with quilting, uh, at least in my opinion, is when the design gets smaller, you wanna shrink that stitch length just a little bit. Uh, that way curves look like curves because if you get really small, but you have a big stitch length, everything looks faceted. So something that is a circle starts looking like a hexagon. But if you use tiny stitches, it would be perfectly round. So just now I set my stitch uh, length to 13 stitches per inch, just to make it look a little, little tighter in the design. This is finishing up and we've successfully completed the center portion. So we're on our way to completing this little project. And sometimes the thing that takes the longest time is just setting our points. But I like to set the points precisely because if you don't set your boundaries precisely, especially when we do the fill, which is coming up, uh, things can get a little bit wonky, look a little bit wonky. So we take our time when we set our points. So now the next thing is in the corners, we have this line quilting that's been done. And I've done two of these opposite corners, one corner here and one corner here. And I've done this in yellow, which probably isn't the best on the camera, but I think you can see it. Let's go back over to the table real quick. And just to remind you here, we're gonna be doing this right here. So you can see this is line quilting. And then we do some of the little bit of pillowing. So let's select that area and make that happen. On our screen, we go into line quilting. So I just press that button. I'm still using my offset. And I select points. And because I know how line quilting works, it use, puts a straight line segment in between points. It can modify that straight line into curves. So, and the curves will be made in between the points that I am selecting. And you'll see exactly what that means in, as soon as I click my last point here and I close the path and say done. So that was the area that I've selected. Now, when I put in my line, it, it can stitch those straight lines, say it was going to be in the ditch, but I want it to put in those curved lines, the pin cushioning effect. So I've got my design on the tablet and then I hit the pin cushion button and I'm going to go in two, two values, so two steps in, and then I'm going to, I want to do two pin cushions or I want to double it up. So that is the design it's going to do. And that's exactly what I did in the sample when I made that sample. So again, it's, it really is that simple. We get the comments we get are, it looks too simple. It can't be that simple. It really is. There's no magic. You're watching in real time as I'm doing this. So I, it generated those curves. I say, move to the start point and then it goes right to the start point. I'll pull up my bobbin thread. And again, I just press go. Now, one thing I do look at as I'm quilting, and you'll, I'm gonna put my hands here. I do look at where it comes into points because I wanna make sure that it's as close to those points as possible. And you would say, well, of course it should be close. It's a robot and it's it's perfect. Well, the movement of the robot is very, very good. But what changes with every stitch that is put into fabric is that the fabric changes and the fabric moves one way or the other. As soon as I put, for instance, well, I'll try to put my finger here and not scare anybody, but as soon as that stitches down that line, it pulls that fabric in. So we have to be, aware of that. So I'm just looking and I want to make sure that 
nothing goes into the area that I don't want it quilted. I want it to look nice when it's all done. So, and the way I do that is if I notice that it's going too far one way or the other, I'll push down on the fabric, which essentially just shifts the fabric a little bit. It's like you, you're working the material just a little bit to make sure everything looks perfect. And that came out really nice. I didn't have to really maneuver anything badly. And that's because, again, this isn't a very, very dense design, but it has a little bit of closeness here that can pull that fabric in. So there I've done that first, first segment. And when I selected my points, I went from, I think, this point to this point. So in between those two points, it did the, the curved line. In between those two points, it did the curved line. If I had selected a point in the middle, it would have done two curved lines. So we're gonna make it symmetric again so that it, we can maybe use this sample later. And again, I exit from my that session. I go back into line quilting and I'm ready to select points again. Again, I'm using my laser pointer. Three points. Four, five. Remember here, I wanted to have those things in here. So from that point, I need to go back down. Let's pretend that there's a line there. So now that'll make that one. Now I go back and it's gonna make that one. So I select that point back here. And I already have a point in the upper right. So it will auto close that. And there I go, again, tap, tap, and then I put two steps. So I'll do two steps worth. Just that easy, and then move to start point. And we press go. I'll just keep watching. Looks pretty good. Nice. Nice. So here it's going through, everything's looking nice. I'm not having to really get involved. Another nice thing to do is whenever you, for, the, for those of you that do have a Qbot and are just watching to pick up on some tips, one thing that's good to do is to calibrate your laser whenever you make a change. I'll let this finish up here. I think it's gonna be okay is to calibrate your laser whenever you make a change to your the fabric set or the quilting sandwich that you're doing. Right now I have just a, a nice cotton on the back. I have a low loft batting and I have my top. For instance, say I'm doing something with a higher loft uh, fabric and quilters get asked to do lots of different things. You may have projects that run the gamut of of the stack up of materials. Not everything is two not everything is two solid pieces of a cotton and a thin layer of batting. You get bulk, you have things to deal with as quilters. So what I suggest is once you have your uh, sandwich all installed or uh, set up on your frame, you do a calibration of the laser uh, just to make sure it is aligned when you put it, the needle down, you offset shoot the laser through the hole and then do a double check to make sure it goes through that hole. That's very, uh, very good advice because if you change the loft, the focus of the laser changes and then you have parallax and we get into big words, but things will be off and you'll be scratching your head. So it's always good to just calibrate on the, the quilt that you're quilting on. Okay, 
we're going to exit this and now we have to get into the background fill and this is where it gets fun because this is a real um this is something that you really have to do in quilting especially when you're doing custom quilting you're you're going kicking it up a notch, so to speak, and you have custom work that you need to get done in your quilt. So it's not just slapping it down, getting the edge, edge done, get the quilt out the door. It's not as easy as just going block to block to block. Now you're doing some detailed work. And we want to show that Qbot can do that detailed work. Again, we go into pattern quilting. So we just press that button. We're going to choose the quilting area, and this is our outer boundary. Now, normally I would do maybe four points per line, which seems excessive, but for to keep this moving along, I'm just gonna do three points per line, the end points in the center. The good news is, is that this was quilted with Qbot, so the lines are straight. But if this were a pieced block, for instance, you would wanna make sure that you, you capture all of the detail of whatever ditch this is. So I'm going to select the points. And again, this is the this is the part that's kind of like watching paint dry. You notice that I, maybe you can't see it, but I tap the center of the screen. Basically, anywhere in this, uh, I'll point at the screen here, but maybe look at me. Anywhere on that right side of the screen that's the canary yellow, you can tap that. So as you're working your way around the quilt, you don't have to continually look up for a specific button. You just tap the screen. Another feature we have is voice recognition. And with that voice recognition, you can say the word OK, and it will set the point for you. So if I were using re re voice recognition, I would be holding the carriage nicely, and I would say OK, and it would actually click that point. We can't show that when we have our tablet connected to the camera. It doesn't allow that to be, uh, it doesn't allow that feature to be used. That's a, I guess, an Android thing. And we also have a, when you press the screen, there's a, a click feedback to let you know that you've selected a point. Okay, so I've selected my outer boundary. Looks like I got everything I wanted to do and I press done. Now we say, do you want to set an inner boundary shape? And yes, we do. So now we're gonna look at this inner boundary and that's this square that's on point. And again, I'm just gonna do three, well, no, I'm, I'm not gonna do just three. I'm gonna do four points because I do want this to look good for everybody. And you never know that straight line that I quilted at the beginning now might not be perfectly straight because I've put quilting in these blocks. I can't emphasize that enough. When you're quilting by hand, your eye automatically compensates for all the shifting that goes on in a quilt as you quilt it. But when you're a robot, the robot can't see anything that's been moving. It just knows X and Y coordinates. So if we can define the boundary as best and purely as possible, we'll get better and better results. So I've selected the inner boundary. I say done, and I could go on. You can select as many inner boundaries as you want. So we don't want to do another inner boundary shape. So we say no. And now this is kind of the fun part. We're going to do a background fill, and we're just going to use an edge to edge design. And we're going to do something that quilts out kind of quickly. So I'm going to do an edge to edge here. And I'm going to just select a meander. And I'm going to move that. I go into modify. So I've placed the design like normal. I go into modify and I'll change this. So it looks about like that. That looks good. And then I just say trim to boundary and then say done. Oh, well, I have another choice here. Uh, look on the lower left of the screen. Jump stitch, inner boundary, jump stitch, outer boundary. So let's 
Let's jump stitch. Let me see. I do want to show the jump stitch. Let's jump stitch the inner uh, the inner boundary. The outer boundary, we're just going to let it march along. So when it comes to the boundary, it'll stitch along the boundary and then continue. You can, depends on the complexity of the design, but you can have it stop and start at every intersection. The reason why you may want to do that is because it can add a lot of bulk to the design if it's constantly over stitching, which you may, it may blend in, it may not. So I say done. It cuts everything off and you can see the different the different breaks uh, in the design. So I move to the start point. Those green and red dots are the different breaks in the design. Move to the start point, I pull up my bobbin thread and I press go. And it's gonna stitch along that outer boundary and I'll be I'll pay attention just so that it nails the same line. I want it to be as nice as possible. But here it comes to the inner boundary. It did a tie off stitch. I'm gonna give a little slack, press continue on the screen. Let it move to the next point. Press go. Let it nail its beginning. And then I can get in there. I know that scares people when I get my scissors in there, but it's okay. I've done it before. And then press go again. Again, it has that tie off. Continue, give it some slack. Press go. I won't get in there and trim that one. And here we're at the outer boundary, so it's going to stitch along the boundary. And again, you can see my you can see my hands in here, and I'm just waiting for something to go bad, and if it doesn't, great. Now here's kind of the key part, and we're getting close on time, but I do want to show this. So now, what do you do for the second one? That's got to be a miserable experience now to get it placed to do the next line. Nope. If we look at our tablet, we're done with the quilting. We hit overlay. The design magically reappears. Modify. I know this design nests just by pulling it down. So I'm just going to pull it down vertically. So I double tap the Delta X and that locks it back and forth. I pull it down just that easy. Trim, boundary, okay. Scroll up, done. It's trimmed it and I move to the start point. Now this time I did, I let the inner boundary be stitched. It'll be a little bit quicker. We'll let this go. And then I'll show you on the right hand design that I had done earlier, what it looks like when it's all complete. So I'm just gonna let it do its thing. I'll pay attention here. And you can see, even though stitching is getting in, it's nailing those, it's nailing those ditches pretty nicely. And remember, if this were actually pieced and that were a ditch, if that were an actual ditch, you would be getting, you could open that up and let it go right in the ditch and you would never see that anyway. And it's, it's going around the whole block to get to the other side. And as this is finishing up, we're gonna let it finish and then I'll scroll over so we can let the camera see it completed in this block. It looks really kind of nice. So what's neat about this is that you can use any design 
as your background fill. So if you have, if you like pebbles or if you like just straight lines, you can use any design as a background fill. And here it is complete where I've done, I've done this section, this fill first. You might, I'm looking at it. Yeah, you can see here how it's done. Everything is nested properly and it's all complete. So there's a project. This is of how we go about things, how I go about quilting with Cubot in the real world, not just in the demonstration world. And we'll, as we go on tomorrow, we'll get into a little bit more depth and, and ratchet up the projects that we can do with Cubot, some that are not really just quilting. I think tomorrow we have on tap uh, some applique, uh, the applique echo feature that we have in Cubot.